Namaste. <clears throat> All right, good morning, guys. I just wanted to give you some more details about the solar system. We've been studying the solar system earlier on in astronomy. We studied the stars and, and groups of stars, like galaxies and things like that, and how the universe started, at least according to the best knowledge that we have. And lately we've been studying the solar system. It was a little more personal. Solar system is kind of like our, our neighborhood. It's our sun, it's our planet. And um, the other planets that form our neighborhood that go around the, the sun. All right. And I also uh, had you today, I, I had you do a FET simulation <clears throat> um, and take a look at that and answer some questions on it. I just want to make sure that things were cleared up with it. So hopefully you're watching this video before you do the simulation and it might make things a little bit uh, easier for you. All right. So one of the things I want to clear up is the inner solar system versus the outer solar system. So if this is the sun, you have the inner planets, okay, which are called terrestrial planets. They're small, they're dense, okay. Um, they're small as far as planets are going, are, are concerned, all right. And you say, like, well, the Earth is really big. N not, in, not in terms of planets in general. There are many planets, even in the solar system, that are much larger than the Earth. Well, anyway, the inner solar system... Right, are the planets Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. So it's, it kind of goes like this. Mercury is the closest. Venus, Earth, and then Mars, like that. Okay? And those are the, the inner, that's the inner solar system. Now, then, after that, there's this big space between Mars and the next planet, which is Jupiter. And again, the inner solar system planets are... They're um, rocky, they're dense, they're like the Earth is made of mainly um, iron, which is kind of heavy, and, uh, and uh, silicates, which are basically make up rock, and stuff like that. And the reason why that is, is because once the sun lit up uh, early on in the formation of the solar system, this part of the solar system got hotter. Anything lighter, like gases, things like that, anything that... Um, water and believe it or not there's water that's formed when you know that um, goes out in the space when the supernova explodes okay and gets shot out in the, in the, the the stuff that made up the the giant star that went nova gets shot out in the space to eventually collect and form nebula which then eventually collapse which then again make more stars okay but anyway um, all things are in those nebula Okay, all the things that we know of, all the elements that are on the periodic table, which you will spend an entire year studying two years from now when you do chemistry. But anyway, um, all of the lighter stuff, once the star, the sun lit up, it got warmer uh, close to it. And so things made of ice and stuff could not form in the inner solar system. Okay, so to draw it in a little bit more in different scale, all right, if this were the sun now, okay, the inner solar system would be something like this, okay? And then there'd be this, this would be like Mars right here. Then there'd be this big space before you got to Jupiter. And Jupiter is a large gas giant, okay? It'd be going around like that. And <clears throat> Saturn, and which is a little bit smaller than Jupiter, but it's the most impressive one. That's the one with the rings on it and stuff. And then Uranus, Neptune, and it's Uranus. I know what you just thought, Tyler Burdick, okay? Um, <clears throat> but anyway, those planets out there are large gas giants. They couldn't have formed close to the sun because they have a lot of less dense material in them. Uh, things like methane, ice, and things like that, okay? Um, now, it's important to note that they also have things going around them. They have many moons, all right? So, for example, there are moons around Jupiter that are actually made of ice and might actually have liquid water inside them, and things like that, like the moon Ganymede, all right, uh, among others. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, these large gas giants are in the outer solar system, like that. And then you have your... Uh, dwarf planets that are way the heck out there. Okay. All right. 
Um, I also want to clear up something that the orbits of these planets are not circles. We tend to think of <clears throat> the Earth going around the sun, okay, in one big circle like that, like it's a perfect circle. That's not the case, okay? I know I didn't draw it correctly, you know, with the sun right in the center, but actually it's probably a, a better I, um, <clears throat> way to draw it because the orbits are not circles. <clears throat> They're actually ellipses, okay? And an ellipse is a flattened out circle, okay? So an ellipse, and this is an exaggerated ellipse, an ellipse is a circle that's been flattened out, and the planets, all of the planets, actually go around the sun in ellipses, <clears throat> like that. And um, in a, 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 whereas a circle would have a center part, okay? An ellipse has two what are called foci, okay? And they, the foci are, um, depending on how flattened out the ellipse are, are either closer together or they're farther apart. And the more perfect you get um, the ellipse to a circle, the closer the foci come in to eventually at a perfect circle, they come together and they make one center. Yeah. Um, what you should know is that the planets, <clears throat> all of them, they travel around the sun in ellipses with the sun being at one of the foci of the ellipse that the planet is traveling around. Okay, so that when the Earth goes around, this is exaggerated, right? When the Earth goes around the Sun, there are times when it's farther away, and there are times when it's closer to the Sun. Now, by the way, just to, to, to get, to dispel a misconception, this is not what causes summer and winter. What causes summer and winter is really the fact that the Earth is at an angle to the Sun. So this would be the North Pole, this would be the South Pole, and at some points, all right, um, like if this were the sun out here, like for example, this part of the earth is getting brighter sunlight, and this part of the earth would have summer, and this part of the earth, which the sunlight's hitting at an angle, okay, uh, has winter. That's really what causes summer in winter, okay? And that's also why uh, when we are having winter up here in the northern hemisphere, up here in North America, Europe, stuff like that, the southern hemisphere, like Australia, Southeast Asia, is actually having its um, its summer. So it's cold here in January. In uh, Australia, it's warm. It's the equivalent of their uh, July or August. And then vice versa, when we're having summer, or when we're having our summer, they're having their winter and so on. Okay, so that's one thing. And then the other thing that I want you to know is... Um, the speed that the planets travel as they go around the sun, that changes with their distance from the sun. So for example, as the Earth is going around the sun, it's farther away, it's moving slower. Slower, slower, slower. As it gets closer to the sun, it actually speeds up a bit, whips around, and then gets slower, 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 faster, 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 slow, faster, slow. So as the planet gets closer to the sun, it whips around more and speeds up a little bit more. Now, the reality is, even though the planets do travel in ellipses, <clears throat> they're, they're ellipses that are really, really close to being circles. So it's not a perfect circle, it's an ellipse, but it's an ellipse where the foci are like really close together, okay? so. This is it right here, okay? And the foci are, are really close together, like that. So there would be the center of the sun, and the other foci would be like right there, just outside the sun or something like that, okay? Now, um, this type of orbit is exaggerated whenever we see um, a comet. Remember, comets come from way outside they're the last thing that you can call the solar system is the Oort comet cloud, okay? Which I explained in another video and so on. And every once in a while, a comet, and there are millions of these things out there, will get kicked in because it'll travel close. It's, it, they, they travel at different rates, so one might 
um, travel close to another and then give it a gravitational tug and it will go careening. So if this is the sun and this is the way the Oort Comet cloud, it will go, for lack of a better word, fall into the inner solar system, okay, where we can see it when it happens. And so when the comet does that, you get it has an elliptical orbit, but it's a really, really stretched out ellipse. And so it starts way, way out here and it's going slower. And as it gets close to the sun, just like when you're falling, you get faster and faster. Okay. As it gets closer to the sun, it, it gets re it starts to get really fast and then whips around and then goes slower, 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 and then gets pulled around in the rest of its orbit slow 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 whips around and then gets shot out again and so on and when it's out there we don't see it we see it when it's in here because like this would be the earth's orbit like that and the comet gets close enough to our planet that we could see it at some point okay so i did want to point that out to you that the closer that you get to the sun the faster the planet the com or the comet whatever the case may be actually moves okay so anyway i just wanted to throw that out there to you guys um hopefully that'll make more sense when you're playing around with the um with the simulation that i want you guys to play around with today so okay all right um <clears throat> so anyway just wanted to say that hopefully i clear things up remember to uh keep a crowbar handy it's good to have all right so remember crowbars are good all right, and remember to enjoy your apocalypse, okay, and have some fun. So, call us out.